Yeah. They didn't go into what they, they got a kill, and they weren't like, we can totally get more. They actually waited a long time. We saw Alex farming for how long after going 0-2? And they also, you know, it was fortunate for them to go in those two versus one lanes, so yeah, yeah, he, yeah. he didn't have to That's get punished true. early uh, due to his range disadvantage. But I really want to talk about, you know, how Darian knows Shivana so well, one of his favorite champions, always has been. He is counterpicking Shivana with Warwick, which we haven't seen a lot of. Um, Warwick, not one of those top lane meta champions that's, uh, you know, using the Perseverance like all the, all the other ones. He'll probably take that and go defensive. But I'm really curious to see if they can actually find that one versus one matchup. I want to see it played out. The one versus one would be awesome. That Warwick at 40 minutes is going to be a nuclear bomb running around because it's one of the hardest champions to kill. So, so much sustain. The late so game sustain. for these guys. XDG needs to come out strong as they did last game, but they need to hold it down. Any sort of giving up, Gambit is going to take it and completely run with it. For game two of the Battle of the Atlantic here, we are on to the rift. Gambit looks to take it. XDG looks to stay in the series with this win. Looking to have some, some fun again here, too. Darian. Rock and the Warwick is initially heading towards the top side. So we'll have to see if he does stay up there. He's got the teleport this time. So Shavana, yes, she'll have the upper hand as far as the duels are considered early on. Because he's taking the combat summoner of Ignite. But Darian will be able to join the rest of his team. And a level 6 Warwick teleporting into your lane is a devastating thing. Especially if that does happen bottom lane. Edward can easily set that one up lock both members of XCG in place and, uh, and have Darian buy him enough time to join the fight and suppress one member. Alex taking E, going against that ranged in mid. And you can see, I, I wouldn't doubt a few Doran's purchases here. We all know Gambit for loving the Doran, so expect a few more to go under the belt of Alex here as he tries to go hard on Mandatory Cloud. I think he's going to have a little bit of uh, revenge from last game because Mandatory Cloud had his way in lane. Yeah, Mandatory Cloud, though, very confident on that Syndra. Uh, very popular champion for a lot of North American uh, high solo queue players. I think he'll be able to deal with this Riven because she's gotten so popular as well that you get a lot of practice laning up against her. You can see all the totems activated and starting to be used. We'll see who backs to switch that out for the sweeper, usually the supports, but right now they get that first a bit of jungle cover and they'll be safe for the early part of the laning phase. It wasn't safe in the mid lane, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. Both of these champions in the mid lane have pretty high kill potential, so it'll be interesting to see where these junglers go first, because Elise, great at early game ganks, but so is Lee Sin, and Smithy yeah. is a beast Lee Sin. So they'll probably be making some early visits around there to try and turn the tides in this mid lane yeah. war. This is about Smithy, Jarvin, and Nasus, really, that he was able to make his mark in the summer split and be that, as Freak said, the player that was really the most improved. So we'll see if it transfers over here now to 3.14 into the Battle of the Atlantic. Both of these teams, as we said, testing out the waters and Gambit doing a little bit more. Alex taking some damage in mid, but we saw this before. He knows what he can take and when he can take it. Again, we do uh, have a 2 versus one switch as well. Yeah. So uh, it, it kind of makes a, a bit more sense here for XCG this time around because it's going up against Annie Lucian, which we talked about. So it's a, an aggressive bully lane uh, for the 2 versus 2 situation. Meanwhile, they're just having, you know, um, Benny roam alongside Smithy and give him a little jungle help while they wait for the minion wave to get to his turrets. And at least one game, or the one game we just saw, there hasn't been much jungle invading after that first red buff we saw. CLG alternate was jungle all day. Those guys had a vendetta on the, on the buffs. Really, there's been no focus between these, these so two So especially early, jungle invading and jungle uh, counter jungling is not as effective this patch because, oh, well, here we go. Diamond coming in for a gank. That's oh. still effective. As you were saying. Yeah. So that was effective. They got the flash out. Uh, Man Cloud did not, however, take any harass. And since Diamond was spending his time in the mid lane going for a gank, uh, it's a small advantage here for XCG as long as the repeat gank does not secure a kill on the Mandatory Cloud. Because Smithy is spending his time doing turret damage. Yeah. But Man Cloud's pretty far extended. Oh, Man Cloud right back to the mid lane, and it is revenge coming in for Alex Each with the help of Diamond. When you burn your flash that early against an Elise, you have to play defensively. You have to respect the Elise because yeah. it's so easy for Elise to gank mid lane. Just like I was talking about at the beginning of the game, she can come in from the Fog of War, and it makes it so easy to land the cocoons on mid lane. 
Mandatory Cloud right there. I think that was just a bit of an overextension after he had already blown his flash. Absolutely. Diamond had all eyes on the three and Smithy, or Smithy and those two in the top lane taking off the turret damage. So he was free to get They didn't even get that turret either. Yeah. No. Well, it's close. Yeah, it's like <laughs> pretty close. They it. didn't get it, though. <laughs> it was a little, when they were up by that turret, it was kind of reminiscent of what TSM would do. And there was just nobody there for them to wait and kill under the turret. Smithy now has actually uh, taken the opportunity to try and do some invading of his own, Ooh. get behind Alex. Since Alex used all his summoners to get the initial kill on the Mantor Cloud, he doesn't have them left. There's the scatter. There's no hard CC, but they are going to be able to get the Q and the Resonating Strike. Very good follow-up on that first blood. Great answer there from Smithy. Again, Lee Sin as well. Great early game <laughs> potential. And since Alex used his summoners offensively, you don't kind of have that sense as a mid laner that you have to play defensively because they're like, oh, wow, you know, I just got it my kill. But to get that yeah. kill, you used your escape and you're going to have to uh, watch out for the jungle. Almost sets you up for the better. You got to be ready. Beautiful play by Smithy. Knowing that that money would be spent, a free gank without diamond is a kill for them. And now one to one. Benny. Looks like he may lose his turret in the bottom lane. He's not doing too much for it. He wants that farm anyways. But they are down to a second tier already here. So this is definitely causing Diamond a bit more trouble in where he has to go in these lanes. Yeah, Diamond coming to try and put this uh, top lane shove in check here. Uh, able to throw out just one spider to deter them and then go farm up a camp. So even though Smithy and Diamond are both down there, Diamond's trying to get a little bit more money out of the situation. I wonder how long they'll keep this. The bottom turret goes down, so they may be forced to match up in mid or something. But last time, XDG did this first, and they quickly rotated back to the 2v2. Now they're pushing forward. And you also have to worry about the dragon at this point. They're spending so much time they top have a lot of people top, yeah. with their jungler that the dragon is open for Gambit. And they definitely have the, the resources down there to take it. Another turret going down, a flash burn on the Benny now. They're waiting on uh, Syndra's to come back up as well. So Man Cloud and Benny looking for a little bit of safety within their lanes. Ooh. They do have a bit of a gold lead, but again, it's not level two and three, but Gambit tries for the early dragon once This is a dangerous contest. Uh, too much AOE, this is bad. A good grab there, Genja trying to get himself out. Just kind of walk that one back and forth. There was no decisiveness there coming from XDG. That worked out really well for Gambit, and pretty much the main reason that it did work out so well is that their jungler is Elise, and she can tank the dragon with her spiderlings. Ah. Uh, so even though it's very early to take a dragon and it's dangerous because it puts out a lot of damage, those spiderlings can tank a huge amount for you if you're able to maneuver properly. You see Alex's build actually goes for the Vampire Scepter right after the Dorans. So we won't get an extra one, but Diamond will cover that. He'll put one in his inventory. Seven minutes in, XDG chooses to go for the mid lane here with their duo instead of the bottom lane. They're going to just leave that to Benny. Seeing that they've gotten two turrets up in this top lane, it leaves Darien free to freeze this lane. Because Gambit already took the other objective on the other side of the map, that dragon, it means that you know he won't be pressured very soon to join the rest of his team. As long as the rest of Gambit can play defensively, and hold on to their turrets and CS, then they can just slowly increase their gold lead while freezing that top lane there and allowing Darien to not only uh, build up a good uh, CS count, yeah. but also build up a big minion wave that they can then turn around and pressure the top lane of XDG with. It's more of a take and give than a give and take. You gotta be careful. You can't give too much because they'll just take it. <laughs> okay. Especially against Russians. No, no giving allowed. Looks like XCG do have plans on the mid lane here. They're circling around with four members and taking this opportunity since the top lane is frozen, they invade bottom side jungle. Now focus on Zuna here for a second. With all the pushing, with the pressure on the objectives, he is now about 20 CS behind. It's about 16 now that he's rounded up. But that is going to affect. Now that they're meeting up, Genja has probably a bit of gold on himself and it's going to be a good matchup once he gets that Triforce. It's an interesting thing here because Zuna does have a BF sword where well, Genja only has a phage. So Zuna technically with more damage yeah, right there. Now, that hurts. <laughs> win that win that trade and since Bloodwater comes in, not able to get off the uh, stun, but they do have a good amount of harass. Edward looking to regain a bit of ward control here on the bottom. There we go. Put it in the forward brush to keep themselves safe. And with that stun up, he is potential damage. So XDG plays it safe. Really got to watch out for that level six too, because as soon as both these supports hit level six, the bottom lane is going to explode. They have so much crowd control. And again, it will be similar to Literally. last time, which whichever support does get the first move, the initiative for the fight uh, is going to have the advantage here because 
if a Leona is able to land her combo onto Annie, even though Annie's got that Tibbers, uh, she's very squishy, and he can actually try and burst her down. That Phage is looking pretty good for Genja now. A pretty chunky Zuna health bar. Once he gets hit a few times, that's going to be enough. Nothing in the top lane for Darian. He continues to farm 45 to 33, and the farming is super low in this game. It's very low because of the uh, 2v1 situations that we saw. And right. Since, you know, jungler switched over to try and push that turret so much. Um, everyone's focused on turret damage, not so much the farming. But Darian has gotten a giant CS lead. He was down 15 CS before he started freezing, and now he's up 10. So he is more than close that gap, but he hasn't purchased with it oh, yet. Oh, he locks him down with the suppression. Will it be enough? And he will not be able to follow. Bottom lane is setting up for this. It's going to be Edward. He does get locked off that level six explosion. Bloodwater is actually level five. They went in on that before having everything they needed. They thought they had enough, and they are pressured off with Zuna going down. Oh, the combo does land there. Now it's Benny on a run. Oh, Alex in the right place at the right time. And he's going to go ahead and pick himself up a kill. Two for zero. Little bit of overextension on both sides there for XCG. And now Diamond not able to catch Smithy, but you're right. So the big difference right there in the bottom lane fight was that Bloodwater had not achieved that level six. Even though Edward wasn't able to get off his tippers, uh, not having that solar flare for Leona did cost them because jo both junglers joined the fight and Diamond was able to turn the tides. Alex just kind of hanging out in mid lane, so they're not really looking to pressure anything off of this. They say good good lane win down on the bottom, good kills, let's reset. And this again is almost when Gambit took control last time. XDG with a great push, a great start, and then it just kind of still slowly turns over to Gambit. It's funny because the roles have been completely reversed, but Gambit um, are still doing a good job. They're in the lead. They now have the top laner who's just farming, just thinking about himself. Right. He's got the teleport. <laughs> Darian has still not gone back to buy. You can see that last little fight there where Benny got him extremely low. Darian just stuck around, and the, see, uh, the amazing sustain that is uh, in Warwick's kit allowed him to get right back to full health. Only rocking that Doran shield right now. He's holding on to a giant sum of money. <laughs> and before he fights Benny one more time, he's probably going to want first. Benny itemizing for the spirit visage in that top lane. Smithy, actually, we haven't seen this in a bit unless it's you know been played by Insect, but he is going Sightstone and he is going for Team Utility, really assisting Team, snowballing Team, and getting them going. It's interesting the the Madras Razor there for mm -hmm. him too. We have not seen a lot of that uh, come out here. This is oh, they do find him. <laughs> oh, Kenshin, Couple wards drop. Kenjin didn't want any of that, and then he figured out what the situation was and was like, I can shoot him. Yeah, we can do this. Three to one as everybody's kind of getting their nerves shaken off here. 12 minutes into the game, a solar flare comes out into Alex. Can they scatter the weak as well? Very nice by Edward, shutting down Man Cloud. He could not Whoa. come out with the kill he needed. They do go almost one for one on that, but it's not going to be enough in the return damage. Benny gets caught out here. The stuns are consecutive. Very nicely done coming from Elise and Annie. Well played. Oh no, Benny coming in from the back of that fight does get snagged up. Nice cocoon right there, and they're able to get an answer kill. It took them a long time to take down Alex, even though they caught him out so well. And they are going to pay for it with a mid turret, but Zuna has been spending his time all alone down bottom. Yeah, we got to remember that didn't have an AD carry. He's about to meet Genja, so they may not take that turret, and it won't be a trade for the one they're about to get in mid. So a very nice way to capitalize off a few kills, or losing one and taking one, I should say. And Genja is going for that early rush of the Trinity Force, which, uh, you know, not a lot of people have been uh, sticking to. They're, they're waffling back and forth between the Bloodthirster first and the Trinity Force first. I'm personally a fan of that Bloodthirster, but we definitely have seen yep. that Genja knows how to build uh, very well, even though it's a little bit odd and not quite the same as everyone else. And we got a props to Darian, bringing it all the way back. Seasons gets the wits end, bringing that out onto Warwick. I don't know how long it's been since we've seen that. It's a, it's a beautiful sight. You know, get up, get up some magic resist. He can steal magic resist, actually. Adds a lot of damage to that Warwick. So he is not going full tank Warwick like I expected. Um, he's actually going for some, some extra damage in that fight. Sustain, sustained damage. Actually, G. Like we said, the comeback mechanic that is Dragon, that's actually huge for their team. It does become very big, especially as the game goes on and it increases in that cash money. 
Again, we have the Relic Shield. Oh, Relic Shield, rather, on the side of Bloodwater. Last game, this was the Talisman of Ascension for them, but I guess with On the Hunt, they don't want the double stacking speed. They're fine with that to initiate. On the other side, it hasn't actually been picked up by Edward this time. He feels like, as Annie, you can put out that power already. You're going to have the gold speed. Yeah, Edward has not been shy um, about delaying his gold gold generating items and sometimes even completely like ignoring them. But when Bloodwater upgrades that to, you know, face of the mountain, it does provide another shield for his team. Uh, so he'll be able to protect Zuna that much better. And Zuna. Zuna just farming away like Darian. These guys, they're up. wow, he is still far behind actually. 113 to Genja, 85 to Zuna still, and he's actually been left alone in that bottom lane for quite some time. We saw him in the last mid fight pounding on the turret, wasn't able to get that. So, a little bit of work to be done, but potential gold sitting on the map for uh, XDG in those turrets. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting that they now have Sivir, uh, the one freezing this lane over there, because they want Zuna to get caught back up in CS. But this Gambit team has such high pick potential, it's very dangerous uh, to give up that man advantage on the rest of the map. If Gambit can start taking vision control, then they can really make uh, some game-changing plays here. Both the Elise and the Warwick are great at capitalizing on catching people. Speaking oh, of catching people, no, though. that is not where you wanted to go today. And he goes down instantly. There's not even a, an inch of motion on their faces. They just knew it's going to happen. That's why vision control is always the first step. Uh, of trying to catch people because of face checking like that. So Alex is the one who actually gets caught out. XG need to capitalize on Whoa, the kill. Whoa, they are everywhere. Whoopsies. Diamond doesn't even have a safe place to run in the jungle. He actually goes back and he pulls the flip side. He gets them confused, gets himself out. Nice little juke there by Diamond. Um, but it's, again, it's a kill for XG that they haven't really been able to capitalize on yet and get any objective with. Smithy now going to do his best to roam top and try and make Darien pay for this non-tanky build. Oh, he is going to have Smithy on the backside as well. The Tempest and Cripple do not hit, so he may be able to get away from them. And it looks like he's going to be safe on this. So, I guess he's decently tanky because he's getting magic resist from the wit's end, and then he's also got some armor. Yeah. Uh, but he's not that beefy yet, and if he runs right into Man Cloud, he's going to take some chunk of health, But he doesn't have the mana to get out of this yeah. one. Man Cloud delivered that one up on a silver platter. All right, that's good. Uh, Drive-by Warwick kill for Man Cloud. They're going to take that one and now try and collapse down bottom. Whoa, thrown out on the hunt. This is why they don't have the Talisman of Ascension. There's the dodge out. That's what they were waiting. He flashes, then Zenith, bla Zenith Blades for the cut, and they finally get the last hit. He's able to walk it out quite far and waste some time here, but Alex now puts himself in a bad spot. They're all trying to rotate a little too late, and it seems like it's putting him in the wrong spot. Right over the wall, blood water from stage left comes in to help. They take down Alex Eish. It's now Edward, oh! the resonating strike. Can he, he still do it? it? Oh, he goes back in for the kick. Smithy with the acrobatics here. First, he baits Alex into staying by waiting for the last second to use his resonating strike and jump back in. Vulcan needs to hear the chance a little bit. Let's let him hear that. But yeah, Smithy, that was a beautiful acrobatic. First, uh, baiting in Alex, and then Edward flashing over and not landing the tippers. Now Darian getting go. They are getting a little too antsy here with what they can do and the amount of power that they have. Gambit has not fallen into a situation like this in I don't know how long, but they are scattered. All right, so let's take a look at it again. He lands the Q and then walks away, waits for the very last second to go back in, bait Alex, then he gets the stun and immediately exits. Wow. Buys enough time for Mandory Cloud to come in, as well as Bloodwater to fully lock up Alex. And then Edward, see, he flashes over here. He's got plenty of vision. He just plain misses. Ugh. Oh, that was just a plain miss. And then Smithy, he's got balls of steel, goes right back in. He's not scared. <laughs> Finishes off Edward. An amazing turn of again. events here. Smithy. Get off my pink board. Smithy hits Diamond. We got to remember, Smithy is the sight stone Lee Sin right now, and he is absolutely pushing people out of positions. Sork boots on that Elise, but she still can't <laughs> deal out the damage that he's given. Bloodwater makes quick work of that ward with his attack reset. And they're able to win that vision battle around the mid lane. That, Kobe, you said this battle started with vision, but it continued with them having more vision. Then Gambit, you can see down on that red fight, there's like four wards. These are all coming from Mithy, or Smithy right now, and it is making them unstoppable. 
Yeah, it seems like uh, Gambit are playing a little bit loose here in this game. They're not playing too careful. Uh, haven't extended the vision uh, to a great extent. And, you know, they're getting a little bit aggressive. Meanwhile, they've got a farming Norwich down by so it's not shove lanes very fast. So it's pretty much always a frozen lane with Darien there. <laughs> wow. Great job being a little cheeky, getting in the minds of his opponent. It looks like they are going to back off and set up as a team of five. Power in numbers right now for XDG. They were not doing anything like this last game. They were all going in for Mandatory Cloud to get the one pick off on Kha'Zix. Now they have the five team fight. All right, so they're grouping up around Dragon. Even though they don't have the teleport, Benny is walking his way down here. And if Gambit don't engage this quickly, then he will join the team. I don't put this past Gambit. They're that team that surprises you after one second of losing a fight. Diamond up and down. He is safe from Pell. And they are going right on the head where he couldn't move. It is going to get obliterated right there. And he does go down. Diamond maybe next. Suna is in a bad spot right now with those ADs and APs around him. And like I said, they can just turn it around like that. Triple kill for Alex each. So they take down Edward, but this back line just destroys Zuna and Mancloud, and now it's Gambit's dragon. I don't think they're going to have Smithy any wants, Smithy wants trouble steal. taking this. <laughs> Alex puts himself in the way of a sonic wave. Oh, he got it! Look at that dragon steal by Benny. Beautiful with the uh, flame breath. Very, very nice job. Making himself apparent in this game. They know what to do. That one's going to sting. That's a... Uh, I'd that's, say so. That's going to tick off Diamond a little bit. Just this a little is, bit. Let's see how this fight goes right, down. So, so many stuns were used on Edward. This is pretty much all crowd control on the support. And look at that Alex Darian combo just mashing his face in. Mandatory Cloud does not stand a chance after that. And they immediately eat up Zuna right after. So that's all the damage taken out from this uh, XDG team. You kind of see how that formulates. You have the dive buddies of Benny and Mithy go. X Mithy, I keep wanting to keep calling him Mithy. X Mithy going in with Bloodwater, and it just left Man Cloud and Zuna. You gotta be a little bit more careful. I'm sure they assess this fight. Oh, coming in on the teleport. There he is, just on the oh! other side. Suppression over the wall. It cannot be cleansed off. And it looks like they are going to try and get this fight back in order. Edward goes down in a split second. Alex Eich now into Bloodwater as they make their way off to the left. Man Cloud very low. Can he deny the vision? But they put down a ward. He is able to get away. Darian and Smithy now in the 1v1. They are going to battle it out with brute force punches. Alex Eich coming around the side, and he is going to deter the rest of this fight. So Zuna was actually falling a little bit too close. They got Darian that scent. is still on the chase right now. Smithy with some acrobatics once again does escape. That, those wards pay for themselves when you're playing Lee Sin. They definitely do. And look at that barren side of the map right now. Talk about wards. That thing is littered with Security wards system. right now. <laughs> Alex is still on the hunt, though. Is he Sivir? Ha, ha, ha. Freak? What did Freak get up here? <laughs> 23 All right. minutes in the game. We got a 10 to 9. That score pretty damn close along with the gold. But the turrets are really what's allowing access into the map. The fact that they're down on the top side, that is where XDG continues to find their fights. Gambit wants the Dragons over Ignover. I don't think XDG can give it to him there because they haven't been their fights at all. Yeah, it's looking like a pretty fun game. They're not hesitating to fight right now. They're engaging all of them. We just saw Teleport burn in that last turnaround to uh, surprise trap Zuna there and uh, burst him down. So whatever it takes, Mo. Yeah, pretty much whatever it takes. <laughs> and uh, by the way, we do have Darian going a little bit more conventional tank items now. He's got that Sunfire, so armor and magic resist. But he has so much damage packed into this build, both from the wit's end and the slow burn. Still, even with these top laners being off and farming the whole time, they sit at 130 apiece, 23 minutes into the game. So you can tell there's been a lot more fighting between the champions and they have the minions in the lane. The turrets have seen a bit of pressure only in the top lane, and XDG is really only, as I said, utilize that to fight. They're not pressuring that lane to get anything more out of it. And as we see down bottom here, um, when the two mid laners meet up, yes, Darian is extremely tanky and he's got great sustain, so he can, he can handle himself in that lane, but Warwick does not have wave clear uh, in his kit. So he's only pretty much relying on that Sunfire Cape burning down the minions while he auto-attacks. And Shivana has far superior wave clear. So she can shove that lane. And she's actually the one who's going to draw resources down from Gambit. 
Oh, fight over this raid. Come on, who can get it? Smithy goes in and smites early, but he still gets it. <laughs> Genja got shot there. Or Genja shot Smithy, rather. Alex, he's finishing up that spirit visits. That means he is a little bit more happy to go into these fights. Man Cloud can't exactly take him from 100 to 0 percent. Maybe that Unleashed Power is one of the strongest ultimates in the game, but not dying right away. Riven can get her HP back up very fast, and he caused trouble. Triple kill in the last fight. And Mantor Cloud has actually built for that. He's built to burst one person down. Yeah. He's got yeah. the uh, Rush of Death by our grass, but that early spear visage on Riven is such a good buy because it protects him, yes, from the magic damage, but also cooldown reduction gives him more shields and right. the uh, increased lifesteal from, uh, from his Spirit Vicious is going to work really well with that Bloodthirst. Synergizing up very nicely. We see Darian and Benny. They, they trade a little equal there. It's about a 60-40 in the last bit of damage as he got a Q off. So those two can be able to handle each other in the bottom lane. So we'll see what the 4v4 fight provides. The teleport's down for Darian. This is really about all the first use of the crowd control and if it's dodged out because it's going to be big initiations. It's either a Bloodwater going in or Edward trying to flash stun. And that's why the wards are so important at this point in the game. And once again, we see no sweepers from Gambit. XCG have picked up two, but Gambit are still holding out on that. They pretty much just rely on pink wards uh, for their vision control. They're on more inventories. Locked to the Iron Solari. Pretty much orthodox builds coming out here. And Mithy only going for the Vampire Acceptor as he goes to upgrade. His path has been really to support his team in this game. Yeah, Smithy's been doing a pretty good job also. He's putting on and a so very good show for the fans. <laughs> uh, some nice acrobatics. We'll some supporting. Now, the other thing about Gambit, you know, relying only on pink wards for uh, all their vision control is that it's a limited resource, but it's a shared team limited resource because only one per person on your team. So if someone like Darian does a good job and he's like, yes, I bought a pink ward, I'm going to place this for you guys. If he puts it in a bad spot, you know, that's that's something that's not going to benefit the rest of the team because he only gets one. Taking out the spiders, he gets a cocoon for it and they back off from the fight. Still seeing a lot of brown boots on the side of Gambit. Doesn't mean game, but it means they are definitely wanting the power of their core items faster than they want the ability to escape and get out of these fights. And right now they're looking to pull position for that dragon. This is the one I said that they wanted, and they're always the one first. They're the one to instigate this. Oh, here we go. But they're not going to be the first one to go in. Benny, dragon to send to the middle. It's quite a scatter right now, but they have all the focus they need. Gambit takes down right onto Man Cloud. They focus in onto Benny. Nobody he can even breathe from XDG, XDG as they are smothered out in this fight. Finally followed up, and a few quick clicks coming in from Darian to finish off the fight. Zuna, once again, left running. Now, he is the only one left on the team, and that was XDG once again initiating on to Edward. They paid for it this time because the rest of Gambit did not hesitate to collapse, and they kicked Edward out this time, too, so they didn't even kill him this time around. Being a nuisance, they're just trying to chase Genja around, make sure he can't back. Make sure he wastes the most amount of time because really they have nothing to do but pressure this top turret, or bottom turret, I should say, the top of bottom in the bottom lane. <laughs> Zuna's still on the run, by the way. This has been a long path for Zuna to walk. He's wearing some holes in his shoes right now, and I don't know if he's going to make it out alive. He it's is like Diamond looking at about 30 seconds on his ultimate right here, and I don't think he has that much time to live. Diamond's got big gap closers. He gets shot from both sides. He gets taken down eventually, but he also started to waste their time that they didn't do much with. That's okay. So we'll say that's another they got sort bottom. of delayed ace for yep. Gambit. They got five <laughs> kills and the dragon out of that. Inside the park ace. Yeah, remember, you know, all these uh, random uh, XCG kills that they're getting. Um, they're getting a significant amount, but they don't get the objectives after. Again, Edward gets so much focus here, but they end up kicking him out at half-life. And then, since Darian ults in on demand cloud, they all have to collapse. And they just get AOE down when Edward comes back into the fight. Oh. And Genta arrives to do a point blank culling to the face and just annihilates the rest of the entire team. So many ifs in that fight. If he didn't kick, and when ben, when Mithy turned around, he had three people right in front of him. Like Smithy could have kicked them all. This, uh, so this, many ifs. This Warwick just coming in every time, ulting yeah. Mandatory Cloud, takes out you know one of the key players for XDG. And it's been a real problem for them. Not something that they considered would happen. Losing their max amount of power in the beginning of a fight. Like I said, it's all about that first moment. If it's not on your terms, it's not going to go the right way. And Gambit has been wanting dragon fights the entire game. 
I mean, Warwick is a very binary champion. He's, he's coming in and you know exactly what he's going to do. He's going to ult one of your carries. Since one of them is Sivir and has a spell shield, he's probably not going to risk it on that. <laughs> so he's coming for Mandatory Cloud. Uh, you can get a Quicksilver Sash um, to try and deal with that. Or something like a Mikael's Crucible. And if Floodwater is able to finish there, he, yeah, he finished the, the Mikael's Crucible. Now He's got to um, be in range. He's the one diving, so he's not on the back line to give that up to Man Cloud. See if they can run this one down. XDG trying to put themselves in the front. Good damage coming from Man Cloud, but he also has to be careful. Being on that front line has cost Zuna his life quite a few times. 14 to 10 is the score. Now we're getting back into the jungle. 30 minutes into the game, XDG trying to cover their ground here, cover their assets. And will they be able to? Xmithy, big damage onto him, but he's able to get out. Locking up the Iron Solari, mitigating a good amount of damage that would follow up. And they stop the fight. All right, chased out of their own jungle, but Gambit definitely with the upper hand here. And now they're going to be able to shove in this lane. In the sieging matchup, you know, they don't have the best uh, siege, but they have such a, a big lead in this game that can just bully XCG around. Double Bloodthirster coming out now for Gambit. Looks like the usual batteries they put in their punching gloves. They're trying to come out with pure power before they go for that defense. We do see a needlessly large rod coming out into Diamond as well. It looks like he is also going for a Deathfire Grasp, which would be quite interesting getting in there with that execution and uh, even more. So, Mikhail's Crucible actually doesn't work on suppresses, I don't think, here. So that's actually not going to save Man Cloud. <laughs> Tough break, but it will save someone else from a single target side. Yeah. Zuna. Clearing up the top. We'll see what the AD carries are sitting out right now. And it's quite a discrepancy if you look at that. 10,004. So it's about a, a grand in the pocket of Genja right now. And a 50 CS, 40 CS in his favor. Yeah, Genja's feeling pretty good about this one. Yeah, whenever you get off a of point Blake culling as well, like in that last fight, uh, definitely emboldens your leash. Gambit, though, it looks like they're going to stick with the split pushing because they do have the, the teleport on Darien. And he is so tanky. Uh, they can just leave him over there while the rest of them throw him down mid. And something Gambit does very well, they did it last game, we kind of talked about it with Genja's build, is that he went for that Triforce, right? He wasn't going to be able to fight Sivir right away. They don't do something they don't want. They avoid everything until they need to do it, and it keeps them on top. They, they aren't allowed to make mistakes that way. Yeah, they're not making a lot of mistakes, but they are having a lot of fun. And, you know, we have uh, Diamond here on the jungle Elise with his own Deathfire Grass. Mm -hmm. So he's looking to come in and burst someone down as well. Seems like everybody, they, they take turns, I guess. One person can have a lot of fun with their build each game. He's going to be max. He says, you have one, Man Cloud? I have one. They are up 6,000 gold. That's been cleaned up a little bit. Last game, that was a 20,000 gold deficit. Darian getting hit up. The initiations that they start using just fuel Gambit to go into the fight every time. They quickly take down Man Cloud. Not a second to think. They go right after Lucian as well, but it is going to be Zuna on the side to go down as they only get Genja. Not a lot of power from him right now in these fights if you got Alex Ish doing everything. Yeah, again, they just burst down Man Cloud. They take out all these damage sources for XCG, and there's no time for them to react. We didn't even have, you know, the Mikhail's go on cooldown for Bloodwire. You didn't get, even get to heal anybody with it. This is definitely going to be a, an uncontested Baron, by the way. Camp it again. Win team fight, go take objective. They are just crushing. Three. Second game, a lot like they crushed the first game. Three Barons in a row. The second game, almost exactly like... XDG with the lead in, in the first five to ten minutes, and it quickly sways the other way. Let's see how they initiate this. And they don't give Man Cloud a chance. Yeah, so there was a great initiation from Alex with the flash stun. And even though Man Cloud flashes away and gets his ulti off on Genja, he doesn't take down Genja. So again, Gambit are able to just clean up the rest of the team, and they don't have to worry about any casualties. That dragon, enough to fight over, even after Baron, the gold that it gives you. As it goes later in the game, is obviously worth fighting over in the eyes of XDG. Bloodwater very low here. Zuna is going. Whoa, he gets a lot of damage coming out to Zuna from Darien. And he is going to be able to flash over the wall. Nice scatter. No! Oh, it's 
the shield, but it's not going to be enough overall. You can see the Deathfire grasp into ultimate almost isn't enough. And if not stunned right there, he would have won that fight. Well played by Mancloud. And Darian shouts, worth. He was able to get soon at least. And Dem comes inside, you know. They're still rocking the Baron buff, so they traded uh, their fairly high DPS tank, Warwick, uh, for the uh, for it's, the AD carry here for XCG. It's getting to that time bomb point. Kobe, where he can just walk around, growl at everybody, and well, you can't do much about it. He has a lot of different sources of magic damage, you know, both from his kit as well as the items that he's decided to go yeah. with. And since he's got sword boots, they hit that much harder. Good. Oh, very nice damage. Not having to use the DFG on that, so you can see they may. Oh, they can't even get to their own turret right now. Gambit is putting their mark on this game. Alex is going real deep here, under the turret! It's a 3v1 situation until his team can follow up, and he does get one with the help of Genja after a bit of the fight. It's going to be on the hunt going down. Mid, Smithy gets himself way too far into the fight. Benny now, here comes the teleport in from Darian. He will join the fight. They will take an inhibitor turret. This is just a massacre now. We've got this beefed up Darian with a Guardian Angel coming in, and he's got blood set. There's nowhere for Bloodwater to go. Bloodwater was like, wait, home is the other way. But there's a D2 to be had. Glad you didn't go for the easy joke about the blood scent and the blood water river. Very proud. You, yeah. They're going to take the bit inhibitor no, after that one, too. Real good work uh, for Gambit. It looks like they actually want to end it now, too. They got the turrets in their eyes. The Nexus is there. So is two points coming in. In the Battle of the Atlantic, if they can take down these turrets, they look to be taking down the second one. Still waiting for three oh, members of XDG to come up. Zuna goes down. It is going to be 50 seconds on the clock. Here it's the Smithy doing what he can, putting the last of blood, sweat, and tears onto the rift here in the Battle of the Atlantic. We see that Diamond has gone down, but the team has to rise on the Nexus, and Gambit keeps it in a 2-0 sweep for the Battle of the Atlantic.